Ahoy hoy, if you're one of my subscribers, welcome back. If this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, then welcome. Today we're going to be looking at fitting a set of 10 inch apes onto the Triumph Bobber. Uh, not a job that I've done before, uh, not entirely sure what's involved in it. I've got this box of bits in front of me here that I got from a guy um, that was advertising on one of the Triumph Bobber UK Facebook pages. There's a bunch of cables in here for extensions of the brake cable, clutch cable. Not 100% sure if it's the right ones. The guy had bought them for a 2017 bobber that belonged to his wife. Didn't get around to fitting them. I've bought them from him. We're going to have a look, see if it's all the right parts, and then we'll go from there. Right, so first things first, we're going to pull the, all these parts out of this box and have a look and see what we've got. So we've got the 10 inch shapes. We've got a brake cable a clutch cable, a um, bunch of wire loom extensions and then there's a few other bits and pieces here that I'm not sure if uh, if, if I'll need. Right, so as we can see here we've got the 10 inch apes, uh, used condition but still still good condition, paint works relatively good on it. Um, we've got three different extensions for the wire and looms. We've got this brake cable here which at first glance trying to have a look at the way it is on the bike at the moment, I'm not sure if this is the right end. We'll need to lift the tank off to have a proper look. Uh, longer clutch cable, which appears to have the right or the same end on it, so we'll see if that's the right length. But next step, I'm going to get the tank off. That lets me have a look underneath it where the, the brake cable goes, and it means that we can protect the paint on the tank and get a good look at the wiring them and what connections that we need to extend. Now, taking the tank off should be relatively straightforward. You've got this bolt here and this bolt here, which require a 12 mil socket and then the tank just lifts up and slides off this little bracket at the front. You've obviously got the electrical connection underneath for the fuel pump and the fuel hose and the vent itself. Disconnect them and lift it up and I say it should be relatively straightforward because I've taken the tank off a number of times now and sometimes it's a piece of cake and other times it's a pain in the ass. So we'll get the bolts off, we'll get the tank off and then we can have a look underneath it. Now I should have said before you go touching anything electrical it's always a good idea to disconnect the, the battery so that you don't short anything out by mistake I've already done that okay so with the tank removed we can follow the front brake line down into this connection here which if we hold the, the spare extension one up against that that's the same fitting same connection just a, a longer cable through at the other end so so that's good news. So next we've got the cables that come from the underside of the throttle and your start and stop, your control switches here and your indicators and all this assembly on the other side. So these all come down under here, along the side and behind this casing and then these connectors here. So we get this opened up and we'll loosen this off and we'll, we'll see what's what. Right, so at first glance these plugs here appear to match what I've got here is the extenders. Now before I go disassembling anything on the bars, what I'm going to do is disconnect the plugs, fit the extenders with everything in its current position, reconnect the battery and then check that everything's still working electrical wise. Um, start, stop, lights, all the rest of it. Make sure everything's working without any uh, ECU faults coming up. And then once I'm happy that these are the right cables for the extension of those and everything's working, we can then look at disassembling the bars. Right, so I have connected up all the extensions to the wiring loom. And as you can see, I've got the tank back on here because for this next step, I want to run the bike and actually see that everything functions properly. Now if you know that the parts that you've bought are genuine and are correct then you probably won't have to get through this step but as I bought these from somebody on Marketplace I don't know if the part numbers are correct for this bike and I don't know if they actually work you know there could be a defect in one of the extensions or one of the plugs or whatever so I just want to check that everything works before I go disassembling the actual bar arrangement so here's a moment of truth. Indicators, horn, 
headlights, trip button, cruise control, hazards, mode button, yeah. We'll go for a start. Okay, so that's uh, all the functions on the bar tested there, from lights to start stop, the throttle control, etc. And everything appears to be working right. So I'm going to call that a finish to part one of this job. And I'm going to separate it into uh, a second part, part two, for the disassembly and installation of the bars. So tune in for part two to see the, the rest of this being completed. Cheers.